How is it that our elites and our politicians go so, so wrong when it comes to relating to people? The reason I'm asking that question is because today I want to dive into a nasty story by Fyodor Dostoevsky because I think it's a great look at how the elites hold themselves in such high esteem but have such disdain and this kind of that soft bigotry of low expectations for the common man. And this story is one that follows a senior official in the Russian government in the time of Dostoevsky, so, you know, the 1800s. And he's trying to be relatable and trying to find a way to impress his other leaders in the government, his other higher up bureaucrats with how much he cares for humanity. And the night just goes horribly wrong. That's what the book is really about. But before I dive into the book and what it teaches us about the people today that we see that I think are a bunch of very similar characters, I want to remind you that you can support the conversation of our generation at conversationofourgeneration.com slash subscribe. Go there to subscribe for $5 a month. You get access to the course that I'm rolling out as well as other premium content in the future, the Discord community, and a copy of my book sent to you. So all that stuff for just $5 a month and anything in the future as well on the premium content side that comes out, you'll get access to. Uh, I just got invited to Clubhouse. So thinking about having some Clubhouses for the hangouts and stuff like that for premium people, for subscribers, other stuff coming down the pike as well. So got to look into how I'm going to, what I want to do and how I'm going to do some of those things, but trying to figure out new and innovative ways to create some more dialogue and some more discussion, maybe having some, you know, zoom hangouts, stuff like that. But you can also, if you're listening or watching this on YouTube, subscribe, you know, make sure that you get notified on YouTube, leave a comment, leave a review on your podcast app, wherever you're listening or watching that really helps support me and my work in a free and easy way. Or if you want to keep up, you can go to conversationofourgeneration.com slash newsletter. And if you go there and subscribe to the email, you get a weekly rundown of some of my top discussions, kind of a painting the picture of what's happened this week. The email just went out this morning as I'm releasing this episode about politicians wanting to have it both ways, which is another reason why I was kind of prompted to talk about this because this is one politician who definitely wants to have it both ways. And so uh, that with some other discussions, kind of my thoughts there, as well as some other discussions that feed into that, as well as just generally good discussions that happened this week around the internet. So definitely subscribe there for free. Just go to conversationforgeneration.com slash newsletter. And so let's get into the meat of it then. And to give you, I guess the, to set the scene, I should say, of what this book is like and the attitude that this person takes, here's what he says when discussing, he's come across a party going on and he realizes one of the people who worked for him got married that day and it's the, you know, the reception for the wedding. Here's what he says. He thinks, oh, maybe I should stop by. And here's how he goes through this process, this thought process. What heroism? This. Consider, given the present relations between all classes of society, for me, me, to go to the wedding festivities of my subordinate, a registry clerk, at 10 rubles a month, at 1 o'clock in the morning, is to cause confusion, turn all ideas topsy-turvy, create a chaos like the last days of Pompeii. Nobody will understand it. Stepan Nikiforovich will die without understanding it. It was he who said we shan't be able to understand it, you know. Yes, but that's you, old men, victims of paralysis and stagnation. But I, I will stand it. I will turn the last day of Pompeii into my subordinate's happiest day and a wild gesture into something normal, patriarchal, moral, and exalted. How? Like this. Listen carefully. And then he goes on to fantasize about how he's going to make this entrance casually and be just lauded and people are going to be a little nervous off put, but they're going to warm up and realize that I'm such a great guy. (laughs) And that's how he views it. That's 
the tack that he takes. That's how he thinks of himself. And I love the neuroticism in every single one of Dostoevsky's characters. I mean, I did the book review of Notes for Underground. That one, the character there is just incredibly neurotic. <laughs> and and it's scary when you realize how much he reminds you of yourself at times when he says something and you're like, oh, I think that all the time. And this person's just crazy, right? I, I shouldn't be thinking the same way as this guy is. But this person... This character, and I'm forgetting his name at the moment, there's all the Russian names are just so long. And so, uh, but I can try to see if I can find it here. But basically what it is all about is his, and so his name is, yes, so, well, well, I'm not going to worry about his name for now because that is not as important. But the character and this bureaucrat who's going and barging in on a wedding reception and trying to get the attention of every, not get the attention, but the praise and they're going to want me there because I'm so great. It shows the ignorance of him as a boss that they think he thinks that people actually like him, that he's different than all the other generals. There's a couple times where, you know, if someone, if general, if general were to walk in and to, to their subordinates wedding, you know, People would be a little bit off put, but not me. People wouldn't think that with me. And I feel like our elites, not feel like, I think that our elites have a very similar mentality that, oh, that guy over there is so lofty and not in touch with the people. But I, I, Hillary Clinton, I understand what the kids like. <laughs> you know, I. Mitt Romney, I understand what the kid's like. And it's both sides of the political aisle. They're just completely out of touch and have a disdain for the common man, the common people. They don't think that people who went to maybe a state school or didn't go to college or work in a trade are, they don't think that those people are of the same caliber or are deserving necessarily of our politicians and the, our politicians or any elite, even like Hollywood elite. And I would say Wall Street elite, all of these, you know, you, the top rated universities, the kind of Ivy League schools there, all of these institutions, elite institutions are New York Times and CNN, right? The Hollywood for ugly people, which is <laughs> journalism. No, that's more politicians. But those people have this disdain for the common man and that's nothing new. You can see it in here. And there's a pride in themselves and this idea that their mere presence is a gift to the common person. And that, I think, is a serious issue that we have to work out as a country because I, this is a rather short story and I don't want to give away the story, but I do think that if you're looking for a great look into the psyche of someone who holds himself holds himself in very high esteem but is really just a blundering idiot <laughs> this is a great story and it's called a nasty story because it gets pretty nasty but i will just let you know no spoiler here what it very quickly you see where this is going in the story but this lofty idea that everyone's going to welcome him and might be a little bit hesitant at first does not work out for him and the man who barges in on his subordinate's wedding, you know, who only works for 10 rubles a month, right? This pompous ass, really, he kind of gets his comeuppance. And I love right now the fact that Twitter, Facebook, the one thing that social media lets us do is expose the idiocy, the blunders, the inability of our leaders to, I guess it exposes the non-pristine side of our leaders, right? When they're putting on their mask before the camera starts and you get that glimpse instead of the perfectly edited camera angle that they wanted to give you. Those sorts of things I think are great because it makes them human again. And we shouldn't be able to idealize our politicians the way we see them today. I get it 35, 40 years ago. John F. Kennedy, I get how you could idealize that guy in a way because 
the TV industry, the news industry, they were able to play to that in a way that they hid all of the bad stuff and were able to show you what they wanted to show you. And it wasn't just Democrats working with the Democrat media like it is now. It was really just both sides of the aisle were able to put on a face. And now they can't because there's constantly, constantly cameras and a bunch of cell phone journalists ready to snap a picture or a video of a politician doing something stupid, saying something bad, tripping down the stairs, <laughs> tripping down a flight of stairs, whatever that is. And I'm glad that we have that to humble those people, hopefully, and embarrass them. They deserve to be embarrassed sometimes. I mean, we all need to get knocked down a peg or two, don't get me wrong. I, I find myself getting doing embarrassing things all the time. But I think that we need to see those embarrassing sides of our politicians and stop lifting them up and exalting them. And I love in this book because they don't exalt this guy. He thinks he's exalted, but he's not. And he really gets knocked down a peg because of that. And so that's the reason I wanted to bring this story to you and to have you check it out. I, I'm going to have links in the show notes for you to be able to find it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm, I looked on Amazon before and I wasn't able to find it in the past. So we'll see how that goes. But I definitely recommend you check it out, you read it, because it's just an entertaining, fun story. I mean, it's like 40, 50 pages, I'm pretty sure. So it's not a long story by any means. It's really, I mean, it's like, yeah, it's about 40 pages. And so it's something that you can read in an evening and just enjoy. And that's, and it's just a good story. <laughs> it's one of those very Dostoevsky stories for sure, where he goes after the elites, he goes after the rich and the powerful, and he sh exposes them for the blundering, prideful numbnutses that they are. <laughs> and, and so you kind of enjoy it, just seeing someone get knocked down that peg, like I said. So definitely check it out. I'll have links in the show notes for you to find that. And I will also, there's a link, there'll be a link as well to go to uh, Books A Million where you can find more books there if you want to be able to buy it not on Amazon or do book shopping not on Amazon. You buy through those links there. That helps me out if you're just planning on buying something, especially new releases or something like that. Go there and check first through my links, uh, through my website. You can find it that way. And that way, if you, I mean, if you have to go to Amazon, you have to, but with all that Amazon's doing of censoring books and basically doing digital book burnings, you know, my book's available on Amazon, so I can't complain too much, right? But it is good to be able to support other businesses that aren't doing that as of yet. So definitely check that out. Uh, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe wherever you're listening, whether or watching if you're on YouTube. And if you're interested in joining the Conversation of Our Generation, head over to conversationofourgeneration.com slash subscribe for $5 a month. You can support the work I'm doing and help me out in growing the Conversation of Our Generation and doing that. But also, you get access to my courses, premium content, my books sent to you, and access to the Discord community and future meetups or hangouts that I am thinking about doing. I just need to figure out times and how to do that. So definitely let me, uh, if you're interested in that, head over to conversationforgeneration.com slash subscribe. And sorry that I feel like I'm a little slow, a little tired, been a long week. And I know you are probably ready for the weekend as well. I know I definitely am. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off, say thank you for listening to this episode of the Conversation for Our Generation. Let's get the dialogue going. I'll talk to you next time.